Okay, so in this lesson, I want to talk to you about assembly modeling. And essentially what we're trying to do here is we're trying to model our components in context to each other. Okay, so what I mean by that is essentially we want to use parameters, settings, information from one model, and we want that to upset, not upset, update the other model. Okay, so what I'm talking about is if we look at this example that I've got here, okay, and I turn off the visibility of that component, we can see that I've got this box sitting here underneath, which I've shelved, that's great. And when I turn the component back on, we can see we've got another box sitting over the top, okay? Now, what I've done when I've built this is I've built it in such a way that the initial component that we've got here, okay, and that initial sketch, if I make modifications to this sketch, it automatically updates the second component, which is this one here, okay? And that's really, really useful when we're modeling, preparing things for 3D printers or prototyping, and we realize that we want to make changes across multiple components, um, especially things like tolerancing, if you do a print and they don't want to fit together, to be able to have these references between components is really, really valuable. So I'm going to do a, a really simple example for you. Um, I'm going to start over here. Before I do that, I'm going to start with a new component. Okay, always important that we've got these components separated. So I'm in my new component here, and I'm going to start a sketch, and we're just going to put a sketch over here. Okay, I actually quite like to run with a center rectangle just simply because, especially if I'm working in the origin, like where I was over here, that's a really great way to start exactly on the origin and you'll have that immediate reference point. So I'll go ahead and make my shape and I'm just gonna put some fillets on there. And we'll just do some dimensioning. Notice that to get the width dimension, I'm going edge to edge because I no longer have the corners. If you filleted after you had put those dimensions on, you would see little warnings coming up, but Fusion would automatically be updating those. Okay. So I've fully dimensioned my object. All right. So I'm going to finish my sketch. And now I'm going to extrude my sketch. And we'll bring it up 20 millimeters. Okay. So there's our first component. Happy with that. Now, for my second component, there's a few things we have to be careful of. First is we're gonna start a new component, okay? And then when I start my sketch, and it asks me where do I wanna put my sketch down, I want to use something on this model as reference, okay? Now, because I wanna take this profile, which is where that sketch was, I'm gonna take the bottom face of that object. And you can see that when I hover around, you can see the color is changing and see that that is accepting that I can use that face for a sketch. You can see the curve I can't sketch on. So I'm gonna to come to the bottom, I'm gonna say sketch, and it's gonna go, yep, sketch. And you can see how it's giving me these edges. I can pick up the edge. If I come up here and I use the offset sketch modifier, and click that, you can see that it is letting me pick up those lines off the object and I can adjust how much I want to offset them. In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with something a bit wider, so I'm going to go three millimeters, okay? If I wanted it to be exactly over the top, then I would just go zero. But in this case, I'm going to go three, I'm going to click OK. Now what I'm going to do is because I want to have like a thin wall because essentially the boxes are going to slip together, this is the lid, I'm going to come back and I'm going to hit that modifier again and I'm going to pick these up again. At the time of recording this video, there is um, what I determined to be a bit of an issue is that it won't let me offset off my new architecture that I've created. It wants me to come back and pick up the original lines. So if you are trying, 
just be warned of that. You want to offset off those lines regardless of how many times you're doing it, okay? So I've got that, press OK. I now have my geometry, but this geometry is sitting inside this sketch, and that's our original sketch that we use to make our first component, okay? I know it's a little bit confusing, um, but once you've practiced this a few times, it'll make plenty of sense. So I go ahead and I finish my sketch. I come in and I hit my extrude, I grab my edge, and then hey presto, it's giving me my option to extrude up. And then from here, I can cap the top of that object if I want to. If I come back and activate, I can see that there's my outer and there's my inner. So that's good. And as I mentioned earlier, if I come in here and I say I want to make a modification to the size of this object, so I want to make it square now, you can see that both have updated automatically. So this component and this component, they're essentially updating in context to each other. And that's a really powerful way of being able to model with Infusion. By being smart about how you put your components in, how you draft them, and where you get the information for other sketches, is gonna really optimize and give you so much more control in terms of your modeling.